give me a shot of bourbon and step on it. My sleigh is double parked. <laughs> <laughs> the holidays are a time of joy and frivolity, but it's also a season of the year when a lot of people find themselves lonely, depressed, and generally out of sorts. The Apartment, released in 1960, won the Best Picture Oscar and four other Oscars that year, and I think it really probably was the Best Picture of 1960. It was directed by the great Billy Wilder at the height of his powers. The star of The Apartment is Jack Lemmon. He plays C.C. Bud Baxter, a low-level employee of a gigantic insurance company in New York. He's kind of a timid soul, but he does have one advantage in the world, which is his bachelor apartment in the West 60s, which he lends out to executives in the firm when they want to go there for a little hanky-panky with their mistresses. Cut it out, Sylvia. Baxter himself is pretty much the opposite of a ladies' man, but he does have an enormous crush on Fran Kubelik, an elevator operator at his company, played by the charming and wonderful Shirley MacLaine. Thank you. And there's no question that Shirley MacLaine is a movie star, but she's just not like other movie stars, especially of the 1950s and 60s. When you look at her, you really feel like you're watching a real person. Happens all the time. Wife and kids go away to the country and the boss has a fling with the secretary or the manicurist or the elevator girl. Come September, the picnic's over. Goodbye. The kids go back to school. The boss goes back to the wife and the girl. Because of this, it's especially galling to see the way that she's treated by Jeff Sheldrake. He's a big muckety-muck in the company. He's played by Fred McMurray, a very interesting actor who a lot of us remember from the 60s and 70s as an affable sitcom dad. But Billy Wilder drew out another aspect of his personality. So underneath the bland, suburban, patriarchal exterior, you see a cold, scheming villain. I'll arrange for you to get a month's severance pay. That's right, Miss Olson. I'm letting you go. Sheldrake has been stringing Fran along, pretending that he's going to divorce his wife and run away with her. Instead, he takes her to Bud's apartment twice a week. And there, on Christmas Eve, Fran figures out just how little she means to him. And after Sheldrake has gone off on the train home to the suburbs, she takes an overdose of sleeping pills. Bud comes home, finds her unconscious in his bed, and with the help of his neighbor, Dr. Dreyfus, nurses her back to health. Roll up the right sleeve. The apartment is fundamentally the story of Bud Baxter's transformation, of his moral progress from schnook to mensch. From a guy who's willing to be pushed around and taken advantage of, to someone who's able to stand up for himself and do what's right. Now this might be a stiff or sentimental story, but Wilder, more than a lot of other Hollywood directors, and certainly more than a lot of other comic directors, was really willing to push and look at the dark side of human nature. And this element of cynicism is what makes Wilder's fundamental decency and generosity of spirit so much more meaningful and authentic. So at the end of the movie, it's New Year's Eve and we're prepared for something bittersweet and maybe a little disappointing. Instead, what we get is a lovely affirmation that new beginnings and second chances might really be possible. I love you, Miss Kubelik. Three. Queen. Did you hear what I said, Miss Kubelik? I absolutely adore you. Shut up and deal. <laughs>